What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing and reacting to some of my old uh, school projects that they've created in Revit. Uh, now I think this is really important because for all of you guys that are just beginning, uh, people are asking me how do I get at your uh, level of knowledge when it comes to Revit and uh, and I thought maybe it would be kind of uh, a little bit as an inspiration or just to show you my path, how I got to, to, to this point uh, and uh, I thought why not share uh, these projects show you um, what they are what they look like uh, give you a little backstory what was difficult to model and so on so uh, that's what I thought would be good for this uh, uh, this video here for uh, uh, for today. Uh, now I got this idea from the Revit kid, he showed his old Revit project, so I thought it was a good idea kind of to inspire others to tell them, yeah, it can be difficult in the beginning, but with a little work you can achieve pretty much anything in Revit. Uh, now before I get into that, uh, just make sure to like this video, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to subscribe, I make useful Revit tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials each week, and also uh, I'm going to be showing you a lot of these projects, and if you, you would like to download all of the Revit project files uh, for all of these, they are available on my Patreon page with the rest of my Revit project files, so that's the second link uh, in the description just below the video and also uh, the first link in the description takes you to my website balkanarctic.com there I have all of my beginner intermediate as well as advanced level courses uh, over 90 hours of video content so if you're interested check it out okay but anyways without any further ado let's get straight into Revit and here we are in Revit, so let's get started with my first project. So this is my first studio project on the university, and this uh, was modeled in uh, late 2015, early 2016, uh, and uh, this was probably uh, the most fun project I ever created. I, I had so much fun modeling this. It's a, a single family home that's kind of in a row of a bunch of these single family homes. Uh, now, uh, as you can see, it's kind of built in the terrain. Uh, that's what made it so 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 interesting and fun. Uh, let me switch this to realistic, just like that. I had these roofs here. This was probably the most difficult part of this model is getting these roofs just right, because as you can see, the profile of uh, this roof, it's, it was modeled as a roof by extrusion, but the profile is not perpendicular to the building. It's actually at an angle. It follows the street above. So it's perpendicular to the street above. Uh, and then uh, it's kind of cut out using the vertical cut, which looks like this. It actually looks horrible. Uh, but anyways, it, it, it's cut by this. And then it has a lot of uh, levels in, in between. So here, this is the street level. This is here, the roof level. Uh, here we have this kind of mid level, which is some sort of an office or a store, then we have the kind of the main level over here, the living area, uh, the bedrooms are up here, and then we have a separate like a small apartment on the bottom with the garages in the back, and this is gonna be a tunnel for, uh, for traffic or for cars to get to their garages. So it was extremely fun, it was complicated. Uh, these louvers here that they modeled, uh, my idea was to try to make a family, a parametric line-based family uh, with these where I can actually rotate these profiles and I spent a lot of time trying to model that and it failed so just in the end for the exam it was modeled like uh, an in-place family and also here for railing I used these like vertical extrusions which I thought looked amazing and there we go so that that was the first building here let's see some 3d views yeah I had these 3d sections created which I, I also thought was quite cool to have as you can see here, we have that garage, we have the mid-level, we have the top level, and then we have this kind of in-between uh, level. And the roof was like the, the, the most difficult part, and then the rest was uh, was fairly easy. Of course, as you can see, there is uh, the, the model is very sloppy. I was just getting started with Revit, so I didn't know much, but I probably spent the most time in Revit for, for this project because it was so fun and, and interesting. And here we have this kind of... Uh, roof uh, window for the, the stair area, which I also thought was quite cool. 
so anyways that was the the uh, the first project the uh, the one that got me started uh, working in revit for my uh, university projects and then this was my second project so this was i think third year or second year of uh, of architecture school and uh, this was a landscape uh, architecture project we were working on this uh, kind of a little complex with a bunch of buildings and I just wanted to use Revit to see what can I do. Uh, this is the project that I used uh, to, to, to show off my uh, in my video for urban landscape modeling in Revit. As you can see, uh, it's uh, the, the point is to kind of design these urban pockets. I actually modeled, uh, designed and modeled this sort of a uh, bench uh, that looks like that yin yang uh, sign or uh, symbol and then we have some buildings here here we have a car showroom because of course i love cars uh, and uh, uh, these few buildings with horrible facades uh, but uh, i i just thought kind of why not try to make the whole thing in Revit, make it interesting? And really, I wasn't thinking much about the modeling approach and so on. Just throw as many things out there as possible just to make it look impressive for the professors. And it did work pretty well. So I'm quite happy with it. Here we have some sort of a restaurant and so on. So that was the kind of the whole approach for, for this project. And it did make some really cool uh, 3D views, I use pretty much 3D views for everything for this, uh, for sections, uh, for elevations and so on, because we didn't really have any uh, regulations in terms of that. It, uh, it was kind of just try to present it with uh, whichever types of views you want to use. And that's exactly what I did. So uh, it did look really cool back then. Now, watching it looking at it i'm kind of cringing uh, with because of the whole design and everything was awful uh but uh, but uh, i think it was a it, it was a good time and i did learn a lot about revit working in, on, on this project okay now things are becoming really interesting and this is my uh, this is the third uh, project that they wanted to show you and this was uh, this was a studio project where we had to design some sort of a, a yacht selling uh, I don't know dealership I don't know how you call it the yacht store uh, or boat store but anyways uh, that's that was the kind of the, the whole idea and uh, this was that project now I really like this because this was the kind of the studio project concentrated on a uh, structure or uh, you had to figure out the the actual structure and how the the whole construction would work and all of that so I found that really fascinating and I wanted to implement Revit uh, to to get the whole thing to work uh, so I I was uh, really ha uh, I really had luck because the the, the teacher uh, or the, the the professor that was uh, covering that structural part was very helpful and uh, she actually allowed me to kind of complete everything in Revit and uh, let me just show you some of that so this is the kind of the load analysis that they that they have done all within Revit. Uh, so this is kind of the, the, this is how I could calculate for each beam and column and, and so on, uh, all of the, all of the loads, all of the forces and so on. And uh, also here we have the kind of the complete structural analysis of that whole building and it actually calculates everything for each uh, part of the construction. So here we have the, I think this is the kind of some foundations probably. And then, yeah, here we have all of the all of the beams and columns and everything. Here we have some forces. Yeah, there we go. And uh, so we have complete uh, calculations for, I think this is for the floors, I guess. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, all of this was done completely within Revit. And I was really proud of myself because I was still learning Revit at the time. I was fairly a novice, uh, but this is what they've managed to, to, to create. I'm not really sure about the accuracy on this thing, so I, I, I'm not going to claim that it was perfect. Uh, uh, but uh, just getting Revit to do at least this, figuring out this part, uh, I was I was really happy with that. So uh, uh, this project was probably the most fun I have done when it comes to uh, when it comes to kind of getting Revit to do uh, most of the job for you. 
Moving on, this was probably the one that was toughest to model. Uh, as you can see, it has this kind of swooping uh, building. Uh, let me open up another 3D view, perhaps just to show you. So this was like a whole complex. It looked like this. And the idea uh, was to kind of have it integrated in the landscape. And I actually really like the, the way this turned out, especially this kind of a swooping part. This is what I kind of uh, set up in detail to have everything uh, be perfect and all of the apartments and so on were in this part of the building and this was some, something like a cultural center or something like that. Uh, so uh, this one was really hard to model, especially this part. Now, uh, luckily I didn't did not have to kind of develop that completely for the final model, so it's only a mass here. Uh, but I actually do have a uh, some images from earlier classes where I did kind of develop it a little bit, so let me show you what that looked like. So as you can see, it had this kind of big uh, swooping uh, green roof. I actually really like these types of green roofs. Uh, I, I think they're amazing. Of course, you have to add railing and then it looks terrible, but you get the point. <laughs> so I was really happy with this project. They even had a swimming pool on the roof. And uh, I, I think it really looked uh, kind of cool. And it was really, really tough to get it to. Uh, to get it to work in Revit because it was such a complex model. I was able to make it out of clay and then it was like, okay, now you're supposed to model that. And that was really, really tough. But uh, I finally kind of got it to work. Uh, and a lot of these concepts I teach in my advanced modeling in Revit course, which is uh, available on my website, balkanarctic.com, if you are interested. The link is available in the description. Uh, but anyways, uh, here you can see that we have this whole building and here uh, you can see you have these little uh, individual apartments with balconies and then we have this kind of mesh following that to the other side. So it was probably one of the most fun projects when it comes to uh, just getting Revit to create a very, very complex shape. And then this was the individual apartment inside of uh, that that big swooping building. Uh, as you can see, I made it uh, like just one corridor here on one side. Then here we have like a little place where you can store your bicycles and so on. It has an entrance with a kitchen and dining area here with a big living room. And then here we have just uh, uh, three bedrooms and of course uh, some uh, bathrooms and probably a laundry room here as well. So that was one of the apartments in this building. This is the next project that, that they had. Now this uh, project, they call it the Steel Monster. Uh, and it was another studio project. Now here I was in a class where it's a very conceptual approach to architecture. You're not really uh, designing and programming practical space, you're really trying to create a certain feel and so on. So uh, just uh, keep that in mind when uh, when taking a look at this. And uh, also this is probably the project where I kind of uh, explored uh, how you can use Revit for uh, these types of things. How can you use Revit in order to create a unique look and a unique experience without having to bother uh, about thinking uh, about some practical stuff uh, with without being bogged down by that. So uh, th th this was quite fun. I usually hated these types of projects, uh, but this one actually, uh, it was actually quite quite fun to create this. It, it looks like some sort of a dystopian factory thing, and it's actually a school, which sounds weird now that I say it, but anyways, uh, it was a really fun project here. You can see this is one of the sections through the whole thing. This was kind of the, uh, where all the main lectures are in this big, sphere. Uh, we have this thing, which is kind of a section running through the length of this thing. It looks kind of cool. Uh, but anyways, uh, here is another one here. We have additional spaces for lectures and so on. And these are some classrooms and so on. This is the kind of view from the top down. So uh, this was a kind of a project where you didn't really care about uh, uh, technical stuff, you really cared about creating something that looks uh, cool and unique. And uh, you can re use Revit even for that, and it can be really good for that as well. Uh, I explored uh, creating uh, uh, fly-throughs or uh, walk-throughs uh, by using this here, walk-through tool. So I made some animations and so on. So that was, that was quite, uh, quite a fun project. 
and this is the final project that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is the uh, Jazz Center in uh, Ljubljana City. Uh, it, it, I think it looks uh, really cool. It's a cool project. Uh, we had this, as you can see, we have a lot of these buildings around. And this was actually modeled as a joint effort uh, by a few of uh, my colleagues and me. So everybody had their own little part. And then I assembled the whole model for the, the whole class. So everybody can, can have kind of the surround. Uh, now, uh, this is the actual project, this part over here. Uh, here we have some uh, real nice all white renderings. I, I really like this effect for rendering because it, uh, I, I don't know, it, 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 I think it looks cool. I think it looks almost like a little model or something like that, not like a physical model. Uh, now here, for example, this was something that uh, that, that they really liked is I like uh, the buildings that went that kind of fit in the uh, in the surroundings and here we had this building that was kind of at a weird angle and then the rest of the buildings followed the regulation line of the uh, of the street or the the basically parallel to the street so what i did is i continued my building here at an angle and up to this point and then here i continued uh, following the street and then the facade follows from here all the way to here. As you can see, these construction elements of the facade are kind of following that line. So I, I thought that was a cool solution. As you can see that uh, over here. Uh, so uh, it was uh, actually quite an interesting and fun project. Uh, it, it was kind of complicated to figure out how to create this facade. I used uh, sweeps with a very, very large profile. And it was quite difficult to get it to work, especially on these curved walls and so on. But I kind of figured out the way. So uh, it, it turned out uh, fairly well here. Let me open up some sections. Yeah, so here are the sections. Here we have some... Uh, area in the middle for concerts. So here is the, the concert hall. Here you can see all of the seating uh, and so on. Let's see, do I have something else? Uh, as far as 3D views go. Okay, yeah, this part, this angle, I, I really like this one. So uh, as I said, here we have that kind of facade that kind of joins together to different angles. And then here I had this kind of cut part. So I decided to place a spiral stair in there and make the whole thing transparent. So I, I think this looked really cool here at this angle, having this kind of, uh, it was actually bright red in the final presentation. And it had just that uh, spiral stair kind of exaggerating this part of the, or this view uh, at the facade. So I thought that was kind of cool as well. So there you go. That was the kind of the final project uh, that I wanted to show you. And again, it was quite an easy and simple project. By this point, I was really good at Revit. So it it wasn't really that difficult to model everything. It did, did take uh, a bit more time, uh, but it was really good. And here I pretty much got the hang of Revit when it comes to working on student projects. Uh, later on, I had to learn much more uh, when it comes to working for professional practices, uh, working in the field, but uh, just for school, uh, uh, it's uh, it's a lot easier and simple, uh, but you can uh, you can achieve quite a lot, and I think Revit is very very good for school projects. Uh, that's uh, that's why a lot of my students here online are actual uh, university students that want to learn Revit for their university projects. Uh, so I have a few more projects that they've done uh, that they've created after this, and I already created videos uh, talking about those projects, especially my kind of graduation project. I have a whole explanation of how I model that in Revit, and I actually have a, a one-hour course where I show you how to model that complex building, uh, but I already have that up, so I'm not going to show that in this video. I'm going to leave the links to that in the description of the video if you're interested. Okay, so uh, those were my projects. I hope you found this interesting. I hope I have maybe motivated you a little bit just to show you how, how I got started and how I got to this point where I am today. Uh, and uh, going beyond this point, as I said, there's a lot more to learn just to be able to use Revit for kind of professional practice, uh, but it's still uh, fun and enjoyable uh, before that, uh, that part as well. So I just wanted to show you kind of 
my uh, my my, uh, my little transformation when it comes to learning Revit. I, I hope I have motivated you in, in perhaps that would be really, really cool. Uh, and thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in maybe some of my beginner, intermediate or advanced courses, all of those you can find on my website, balkanarctic.com. It's the first link in the description. And if you're interested in my Revit project files, like this file that they have over here and the rest of these projects, well, you can find them all on my Patreon page, which is going to be the second link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video, and I'll be back with another regular Balkan Arctic tutorial uh, in a couple of days. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.